Guys, this is Dark Horse Rowing. Today we are talking about damper setting, why you shouldn't be rowing with a 10, and why that is probably blowing you up for your workouts instead of finding a more efficient path. So, let's have a little discussion about damper setting. First, we need to understand what it is before we can get into understanding why we should use a particular damper setting or drag factor. Now, when we talk about the flywheel, if you look at the side here, you'll notice that when I bring this up to a 10, if you were to look at your own machine, you would notice that when it comes up to a 10, we open up the side of the flywheel housing, meaning I'm allowing a lot of air into and out of the flywheel. Now, this is a flywheel-based machine. So what that means when I infuse a lot of air into here is that the flywheel moves and when there's a lot of air, it moves very slowly and feels very heavy because there's a lot of air. Imagine taking a fan and dunking it underwater. It would be hard to spin because it's dense. There's a lot of water. Same concept, there's a lot of air, it's gonna be more dense and it's gonna spin slowly. Now, if I take this down to a one, what it does is it pinches off the air supply. So it limits the amount of air that flows into and out of this flywheel housing. Okay, so when it's low, when it's down at a one, the flywheel can spin quickly and freely, and it won't slow down very easily. So it stays spinning really fast, okay? Now when I take this up to a 10, I put a lot of air in, it's heavy, it's slow, and it slows down quickly because there's so much air that it slows the thing down really easily. Now, why do we use one damper setting over another? And what does that mean? Well, let's take an example. I wanna take two athletes. I'm gonna take a sprinter and I'm gonna take a marathon runner and I'm gonna put them next to each other. Now, a sprinter is a fast twitch, fast twitch athlete, meaning they're quick, they're explosive. They can get out of the gates quickly, out of the blocks, and they're explosive, okay? Meaning they're fast twitch. I then have my marathon runner. My marathon runner can go forever. They have lungs for days, but guess what? They're slow twitch. They don't want to be explosive because they, that is not plausible to maintain over time. So to be a marathon runner, we establish more of a slow twitch body type. Now, if I were to take those two athletes and I were to apply them to a 10 or a one damper setting, at a 10, so at a slow, heavy damper setting, would I want to put a slow twitch athlete or a fast twitch athlete on a slow damper setting. I would want to put the slow twitch athlete, which is the marathon runner at a 10. Now what about my fast twitch sprinter? He's fast twitch, he has the ability to engage quickly and move and go. Therefore, when I take the damper down to a one and the flywheel moves fast, quick, and spins freely, I want to put my sprinter down at a one. Now, this may be the opposite of what most of you are used to. A lot of you think, well, I'm strong, so I should put it up to a 10. Oh, uh, I'm not very strong, I should put it down to a one. It's actually the complete opposite because if the flywheel spins freely and keeps spinning, we need to be fast in order to be able to catch up to the speed of the flywheel. If we can be fast, and, and I'm talking about fast at the catch, not throughout the stroke. It's simply, if I can turn around from recovery into drive, so that moment of the catch, if I can do that quickly, catch up to the speed of the flywheel, I have the ability to put an immense amount of force, acceleration, and distance on the handle without fatiguing. So I don't fatigue prematurely, instead I can last for a long time on this machine and I can get great results. So those of you fast twitch, explosive, CrossFit athletes are a great example. We have a lot of dynamic hip opening. We're very explosive. That's what we practice. You guys are gonna be much more comfortable down at that one. Now, the caveat with this is that it depends on how comfortable you are with your technique. If you have been with Dark Horse and you are practicing your technique, guys, this is going to be much more suitable for you and you will find that you can get the same results down here with less fatigue. All you'll experience is just a little higher heart rate and you might have to breathe heavy, but that's better than having to fatigue and potentially get onto something else. Now, for athletes who struggle to find engagement, for athletes who don't have that explosiveness in their bodies, we're gonna put you up at a 10 to start as you get comfortable, because by putting you at a 10, it's slow, it's heavy, meaning you don't have to be quick, meaning you don't have to be sharp on technique yet. Instead, 
we can make that a little slower, give you a chance to connect a little bit better, and you will be much more comfortable at a 10, you'll find that this will be where you feel most successful to get started. Now, as your technique starts to get better and better and better, you'll find that this starts to come down and make its way down. As it comes down, that's your efficiency point, right? The more efficient you can row, the lower you're gonna want that damper setting, all right? So guys, this is Dark Horse Rowing, talking about damper setting, why a 10 is not where you wanna be. Make sure that you sign up for our newsletter, guys, The Hustler's Guide to Rowing. Every Tuesday morning, you will get a video just like this one and our latest blog article in your inbox. See you on the other side.